All right, we'll start with chapter R1, R for review, and R1 is polynomials. We will use polynomials all throughout this course. They're an example of a particularly nice, particularly well understood function. So first up, what is a polynomial, right? Uh, well, here's an example. 3x to the power 4. By the way, I always italicize my x's, so here's what my x's will look like. Uh, 3x to the power 4. Technically, this is a polynomial, but it's a very special polynomial and that it consists of only a single term, right? So instead of calling this a polynomial, let me just for now, I'll call this a term. And why is it a term? Well, it consists of three different pieces, right? It's uh, it's got this 3 in front, it's 3 times x to the 4th. The 3 is called the coefficient. Uh, x is the variable. Right, so x is, we think of this as being a variable, it's allowed to be any number that you want. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 5, 18, square root of 2, pi. This can be any number at all. And then the 4 here, uh, I'm running out of space. But the 4 is the exponent, right? So x to the 4th means x times x times x times x, right? x times itself 4 times. So this is a term. Technically, it is a polynomial. But usually, when we think of polynomials, we think of them as being sums of a whole bunch of terms, right? So here's another example. Uh, 2x to the power of 5. There's a term. I'm going to add to it x squared. And I'm going to add to this plus 10. All right, so all of these are terms. Uh, even this one, 10, like you can think of this as 10 times 1, or 10 times x to the 0. Right? So technically, that's a term too. And a sum of a whole bunch of terms. Right, so sum of terms is a polynomial. Now, I do need a few more conditions, though. I need a few more conditions on my terms. Uh, so it's really not just a sum of terms. It's a sum of terms where my exponents are all non-negative, right? That 5 is a positive number, 2 is a positive number. This is really, I have x to the 0 here. 0 is uh, not a negative number. And I need my exponents to, uh, to be whole numbers, right? So not like 5.2 or 2 thirds or anything like that. So sum of terms where exponents, the exponents are whole, non-negative numbers. All right, so there's a polynomial. This is an example of a polynomial. It's a sum of these terms where the exponents are, are whole numbers and never negative. So we'll do a few more examples. All right, here's a few more examples. Let's see. Uh, a, we'll do 18, or sorry, x to the power 18 plus 12x to the fourth minus 3x squared. Right, there's a sum of a bunch of terms. My exponents are always whole numbers and never not negative, so this is indeed a polynomial. Uh, I said never not negative. That's too many too many negations there. Never negative. So yeah, all of those are, are positive positive uh, numbers. Here's another one. Two uh, x cubed minus. How about this? Here's my coefficient square root of three times x, and this term is just the number pi. Is this a polynomial? Well, yeah, right? I've thrown in some scary looking numbers, but my coefficients are allowed to be anything. Uh, here it's root 3, here it's pi. Uh, the only thing I'm not allowed to do is have uh, fractional exponents or, or negative exponents. And I don't have that. So this is indeed a polynomial. Right? The exponent here is 3. I haven't written the exponent, but it's understood to be 1. And the exponent here, x to the 0, is 0. How about this guy? 3x squared plus x to the 1 half, which is often written as square root of x, plus 1. 
Well, it looks similar to everything we've been doing, but now it's not a polynomial, right? I don't really like this one half. Now it's not a polynomial uh, because my exponent here on the x is not a whole number. So unfortunately, this is not a polynomial. And last but not least, how about this guy? Uh, 2x plus x to the minus 3 plus x to the minus 10. Well, again, this is not a polynomial, right? It's a sum of a bunch of terms, but here my terms have negative exponents, so this one also fails to be a polynomial. In truth, C and D aren't that bad to work with. We'll work with expressions like this a lot throughout this course, but the really, really, really friendly types of functions are our actual polynomials themselves. All right, so moving on, now that we've introduced polynomials, what might you want to do with polynomials? Well, if you have two functions, you might want to add them together, right? So how do you add polynomials? Or maybe you want to subtract them. Adding or subtracting polynomials is actually really easy. All right, so this is easy. Again, this is just review. I'm sure you've done this before, but I'll just remind you of how this works. Um, all you have to do is add like terms together. All right, so just add or subtract. like terms. And what do I mean by like terms? I mean terms uh, where, the, where the variable x is raised to the same, same exponent. All right, so i.e. <coughs> terms with equal exponents. So, for example, something like this. I'm going to throw brackets around this. I don't really need the brackets here, but I'm just going to put the brackets to indicate which, which are my two polynomials. So here we've got 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. And we'll add this to the polynomial 5x squared plus 3. <clears throat> right, without the exponents, or without the brackets rather, it still makes perfect sense but uh, I'm just putting brackets around them so we can think of this as this polynomial plus this polynomial. You'll also notice something else that's pretty standard throughout mathematics is when you work with polynomials, you tend to write them in terms of decreasing exponents, right? So here I go 2, 1, 0, 2, 0. So we tend to order our uh, polynomials in, in terms of highest powers and then count down. So I want to add them together. Uh, before I do that, though, I'm just going to rewrite this very slightly. This is 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus, I'm going to rewrite this polynomial. 5x squared, I don't have an x term, but if I really want to write it down, I can think of this as being 0 times x. Right? I don't have any x's. I've got 0 of them, so 0 times x plus 3. And I'll never do that again in the future, but I just want to make this very clear exactly how I'm adding the like terms together here. I've got 3x squared plus 5x squared, right? Both of them are x squared, so they are like terms. And adding, adding them together, 3 of them plus 5 of them is 8x squared, right? 3 plus 5. Uh, how many x's do I have? I've got 2 times x plus 0 times x, so I've got 2 x's total. And last but not least, uh, my x and the 0 terms are just the constant terms. 1 plus 3 is 4. And that's the sum of these two polynomials, right? So that's all there is to it. Uh, if I was going to subtract them, I won't do an example of subtraction, but if I was going to subtract them, I would just uh, subtract the like terms from each other. All right, and lastly, um, what else might you do? So now we can add and subtract polynomials together. What else might you do? Well, you might want to multiply them together. So multiplying polynomials 
slides also, I'll say easy, not quite as easy as, as adding them, but it's still easy. Uh, what do you do? Well, you distribute. So, for example, something like this. Uh, suppose I've got, here's my polynomial, 3y squared plus y. Not using x here. You can use any letter at all that you want for the variable. So I've gone with y just to make, uh, change things up. 3y squared plus y times 2y squared plus y plus 4. All right, so two polynomials multiplied together. So how do you multiply them? Well, you distribute. All right, what this really means is I've got 3y squared times this entire polynomial. Right, so I'm going to write it out fully. It's 3y squared times 2y squared plus y plus 4. Plus, I've also got y times this entire polynomial. So plus y times this entire polynomial. 2y squared plus y plus 4. And that's, that's all of the heavy lifting. That's what you have to understand. What do I mean by distribute? I mean, well, when I'm doing one polynomial times another, I really mean all of the terms. The first term times the entire polynomial. The second term times the entire polynomial. If I had three terms, I would have the third term times the, times the entire polynomial. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and that's, that's all that it means. So lastly, we just have to uh, expand this out. 3y squared times 2y squared. Well, 3 times 2 is 6. And how do you deal with y squared times y squared? You add the exponents together, right? So y squared times y squared is y to the fourth. Here we've got 3 times 1 is plus 3 again. And then y squared times y, uh, it's not written usually, but it's y to the 1. So y squared times y to the 1 is y cubed, right? Add the exponents. 2 plus 1 is 3. And lastly, 3 times 4 is 12. And then y squared times, again, it's not usually written, but it's really, it's there, it's y to the 0. y squared times y to the 0, 2 plus 0 is 2, so that's 12y squared. And we just have to continue, do this for this guy. Uh, y times 2y squared is 2y cubed. y times y is y squared. And plus y times 4 is 4y. So we've successfully multiplied these two polynomials together. Usually now, though, you wouldn't leave it in this form. This is kind of ugly. We would want to group all the like terms together again. Um, this is my only term with a y to the fourth. So write it first, 6y to the fourth. Uh, how many y cubes do I have? I've got 3y cubed plus 2y cubed is 5 of them. So plus 5y cubed. How many y squared? Uh, 12 and 1 is 13 y squareds. And uh, just making sure I'm taking care of all of them. And then plus 4y. Okay. And, and that's uh, about as clean as I'm going to get it. There is, in fact, there is some factoring I could do here to clean this up a little bit further. But that's the next section, so I'll, I'll stop here with this. And we'll do one more example. Um, how about x plus 4 squared? All right, what is x plus 4 squared? Well, uh, technically what this means is x plus 4. What does squared mean? It means x plus 4 times itself twice. So x plus 4 times x plus 4. Right, and now I'm going to distribute. If you've learned foiling before, that's totally fine. You can foil this as well. Foiling is just an example of distribution. Uh, so first outside, inside, last. But if I distribute this as I did the last example, it means it's x times x plus 4. That's a really ugly x. x times x plus 4 plus 4 times x plus 4. And we'll go ahead and continue this, this multiplication. x times x is x squared. x times 4 is plus 4x. Four, uh, 4 times x is plus 4x. And 4 times 4 is 16. And just grouping like terms together really quickly. 
this is x squared plus 8x plus 16. Alright, so that is x plus 4 squared. It's x plus 4 times x plus 4. And I want to point out that this is not equal to, here's the most common mistake in mathematics, is saying x plus 4 squared, well I can just distribute this squared to both of them, so this would equal x squared plus 4 squared, or x squared plus 16. And you'll notice it's not, right? x plus 4 squared is x squared plus 8x plus 16, not x squared plus 16. Really common mistake, um, just from knowing what I know about teaching mathematics, a lot of you will make this mistake anyway, but try not to. Try really, really hard to remember this. Uh, do not do this, all right? Don't, don't ever try to square things that way. You can't just square all the individual terms. So we'll stop here and we'll move on to uh, R2.